So right behind me is my brand new BMW i8. And in today's video, I want to give you guys a quick tour of the car. I want to talk about why I purchased the vehicle. And I want to give you guys a quick review and buyer's guide of the BMW i8 seven years later, since this is a 2015 model. So before I give you guys a comprehensive tour of the car, I actually want to talk about why I purchased this vehicle and kind of how the buying process was to give you guys a little bit of insight. Um, a cool fun fact is ever since I saw this car in high school in 2015 with YouTubers, rappers, celebrities um, driving the first ever hybrid supercar, um, I've been kind of hooked and I've, it's always been a dream of mine to drive it or at least own it and it's really cool to see it right behind me. Um, so the reason I actually purchased this vehicle was not for full enjoyment. Um, I purchased it as an investment and I know that sounds a little bit weird because cars are depreciating assets. Um, although I purchased to rent out over here on an app called Turo. I'm, I'm assuming a lot of you are familiar with it and it's like a common side hustle. So I did a bunch of research in it. I tested it out with a personal vehicle um, at my house and then after I did a bunch of research, I decided to pull the trigger on this specific car as I saw it looked like it did well in the area I'm located in. So I'm located in Toronto, Ontario. Um, this is a seven year old car, so it's really cool to see it in great condition. Um, I did a bunch of research in terms of the reliability of it. And honestly, this BMW is really good since there are a lot of moving parts in the car. Although, um, as long as you have a warranty on it when you're purchasing the vehicle, um, you shouldn't be really patching out too much out of pocket to maintain the car. So how much did I pay for the car is a question, you know, the first question a lot of people ask me. Um, the sticker price was about 99.5. Um, I wasn't my negotiation skill weren't the two uh, weren't the best uh, so I kind of had to stick with that number um, but honestly it was really fairly priced and uh, wherever I purchased it from they were you know great from A to Z it was very smooth I think from the day I inquired about the car I took delivery of it within two days um, this this car specifically isn't there's not too many of them on the market uh, there are about eight or ten I think over here in Canada uh, but some of them the Roadster some of them are uh, newer models and a lot of this is I think the only one within a 250 kilometer radius within my house. Other ones were in different provinces. So uh, this car doesn't really show up too often. So when I saw it, after I did my research, I definitely want to pull the trigger. Um, when I purchased it, it only had 49,000 and something kilometers on it. So after seven years, only fi about 50,000 kilometers was a really great um, deal in my opinion, since you know it didn't have too much mileage. Um, and I financed this vehicle. That's another question a lot of people ask me is whether did you finance it, buy it outright, or did you lease it? So my objective of kind of going into this car was to put as little money down as possible. Uh, but unfortunately, when you're buying used vehicles, they're not as lenient uh, compared to new ones, um, and especially ones that are you know in the six figure range. So I did end up have a lot after a little bit of negotiation. I didn't have to end up putting about 10% down after you know do, they did their kind of credit ratings, and I was able to finance this car for 72 months. So um, again, 10% down, I financed it for 72 months because my goal is to just put as little capital down as possible and then hopefully through the rentals, be able to kind of um, profit off this by making more than this monthly payment. So now after I've gone over the buying process and what it kind of looks like, let's give you guys a quick tour of the car. I wanna switch over to my phone to give you guys a comprehensive tour of the car. Uh, the first thing is don't get me for it not being very clean. I have my next renter coming in on Friday and think today's Wednesday uh, to rent out the car. So I usually clean it the day before and get it detailed then. Uh, so right now I've just been enjoying it and I think I haven't cleaned it for like about a week. Um, so yeah, let's give you a quick tour of the car. First thing a lot of people ask is do these cool cars come with, you know, equally as cool keys? Uh, this one's okay. I think it's a standard I model key. I think the i3 has something similar. Um, so to unlock it, just simply click that. And then you have your mirrors which unfold and they fold back in sometimes. Um, so we'll start off with the front grille. It would extremely low to the ground. And definitely if you are purchasing one, uh, you're definitely gonna get, I don't know if it's called curb rash, or, but your front is definitely gonna get a bunch of rocks um, hitting it and you might have to repaint it as you can see. Um, it's been an okay job in some of them, but you can see right here is probably where it's been um, touched up a little bit and that's just kind of the way it works. But for seven years old, um, honestly, it looks great in my opinion. And then the nice thing is you get those green plates uh, since the car is hybrid, so you get the free um, HOV lanes. You have your front camera right here, which is honestly very well hidden. Honestly, you don't really see it too much um, when you're driving, especially because it blends in with that black paneling. Um, next over is you have the 20 inch uh, wheels, the ceramic ones. 
so they look really really nice i haven't done anything to the car um, i'm thinking of wrapping it later on closer to the winter time uh, but right now this is essentially stock nothing has been done so a pretty cool thing about this car is you have your battery in the front and then you have your three cylinder engine all the way over here in the back so it only has about a maximum capacity of about 30 liters so it's really really small i just have like a v6 or v8 um, and then it is all wheel drive because the battery controls the front too and then um, your engine kind of controls the back too you can i'll open this up later to show you guys the engine inside it's covered uh, but unfortunately you actually can't open up this front grille uh, i don't know why bmw didn't want you to see i guess the battery in the front since you need a mechanic or you need a couple people to pull some levers uh, but the cool thing is once it's open if i'll maybe pop up a picture but it kind of opens up like an aston martin so the grill opens up this way instead of that way over here on the driver's side you have your um, charging port so this is essentially always open and it kind of just snaps into place it's kind of weird that it doesn't pop out or anything but you can always just open it up like that and then that's where you charge the car it gives me about 26 to 29 kilometers of range um and then you have your gas um all the way in the back over here and this one's a little bit weird is you can't really pop this one open as well you have to open it up from the inside so you click this little button and then that's when it actually pops out otherwise you can't really open stuff from the outside and essentially this piece of glass is your back roof so it's literally just a piece of glass. This is about the smallest trunk you'll ever see in a car. Uh, you could fit maybe like two backpacks, one carry-on. That's about it. So it closes here and then you have your engine right here in the front. And on that little glass panel, you can kind of see the entire car uh, from the outside. So the one thing I would warn you is the trunk does get a little bit hot. So if you have groceries, electronics, I probably wouldn't recommend putting them in the trunk, but yeah crazy looking though very aesthetic and then when you close it i know it's probably shatterproof but i still close it really carefully and then you just click it into place and then you have the back with the i logo and then you have this is probably my favorite part of the car we have this for i'm no engineer but i'm assuming it just makes the car more aerodynamic but it just looks crazy from you can see here and especially when you're driving and you're looking through the mirrors uh, you look back you can kind of see how crazy it looks Next, probably the most important part is the inside of the car. So the way you actually open up these doors is there's a little button right here. So you just put your hands in. Once you click it, it'll kind of just slowly open. You don't have to do too much because the hydraulics will stop it where it needs to be. And then you have this big chunky panel of carbon fiber to sit right here. Um, and the inside I got, I didn't really have too much of a choice. Definitely would have liked a white interior, uh, but I guess since I am renting it out, it is better that the inter the leather is a little bit darker uh, so you can't see too much of the wear and tear so getting into the car is a little bit of a mission getting out uh, but once you kind of get the hang of it it's not too too bad but yeah now we are in the inside of the car and then the same way to close it, it's like a hard close so you gotta come in close it like that so once you're inside the interior is actually very very beautiful i love how everything kind of shifts or is facing towards the driver's side and then the passenger side um, has a, a lot of legroom so you do have back seats although no one can really fit in them honestly i have driven with me my mom and my dad and you can only sit on this side on the driver's side pretty much impossible to get anyone to sit there but since you have so much legroom over here i would say it's about a three-seater and honestly someone could fit fairly comfortably in the back on a short ride so let's get the car started so it's a push to start it's really cool. It sounds like a spaceship when it opens up and I'll just open up the windows. A big pet peeve a lot of I owners have is that this window doesn't go down all the way. So you can't really put your hand out. It's extremely uncomfortable. And then since the car is pretty old, your side mirrors don't have the little um, warning sign on them. So you kind of have to look through. Not that big of a deal since it is seven years old. Um, here is your front display. So this over here, that blue one shows you how many range, how, how much your battery is a range of. That's eight kilometers. And then over here, you can see your full fuel range. Um, and the cool thing is if you actually put the car into sport mode. So the way you do that is you just click it. Are you supposed to on the brake? I think I put it in drive first and then, you click it, and then you push it over. So now it's in sport mode and you can see it revs a little bit and then it changes. So if you ever drive it in sport mode, it will charge the battery for you. Most of the time, you're going to want to drive it in Eco Pro. That's usually what I drive it in. And honestly, whenever I'm going to the gym and I have this thing fully charged, I will probably drive it in E-Drive. So the cool thing is once you activate E-Drive, as you can see, I don't know if you can hear it, but the engine completely turned off. And now you will try to maximize 
those eight kilometers first before it uses any gas. Um, you have a little bit of compartment space, not too much. You have this over here, this bigger one with, this is like a BMW remote. It's like an option. I don't think anyone gets it in the BMW. And then you have a little bit of space in the back. So honestly, when I'm driving alone, most of the time you can use the trunk, back space, or here for storage. Um, I'd say that's pretty much a comprehensive a tour of the inside of the car. You don't really have too, too much else. Uh, the steering wheel is cool. You have the little paddle shifters on the back. Um, and then your indicators are pretty standard. You have the ones that way and this way. And then this is essentially, if you own a BMW, you control all of your navigation uh, from this little pad over here. So, you know, your songs, your uh, radio and navigation. Now I want to talk about my personal opinions on the vehicle. So aside from how it looks, you know, how is it as a practical, you know, daily car that you have to drive and, you know, use for your groceries and regular things like that. Overall, I probably would not recommend this as a daily driver. Um, I really enjoy it and I feel like if you were to try to, you know, use this as a daily driver at some point, probably do when you're a little bit younger since when I get older, I definitely want a nicer SUV um, compared to a car so low to the ground. Uh, when you are driving, you have to be extremely careful over speed bumps. You have to note that, you know, if you touch the front of a curb, it could definitely crack your uh, front of the car compared to a higher up car or just hit the tire. So you do have to be extra careful with this vehicle. Um, maintenance is definitely high on this car unless you have a warranty. So I'd definitely recommend if you're buying this used, since you have to, since the car is discontinued, um, to definitely make sure that whatever deal you're purchasing from gives you, obviously it won't give you bumper to bumper warranty, but as much as you can get covered. So this is great uh, since it has a lot of perceived value. That's the reason why I purchased it for Turo. So if you're driving on the roads and you have maybe like a Porsche Cayenne or a Porsche Panamera right beside you, or even a Ty the new Taycan, which is, I'd say almost double the cost of this car. People will look at them and they'll be like, you know, they look nice, but it's not a crazy head turner um, unless you're maybe into cars. But this car, regardless of who you are, since the doors go up, uh, the car's low to the ground, it looks extremely futuristic, kind of like a spaceship. Everyone, you know, looks at the car and like, wonders and probably just thinks it's extremely extremely expensive um so that's kind of why i purchased it for turo because it just has that perceived value without paying you know that high msrp or sticker price so for my intended purpose this car is great and i love it and it's you know it's it's been going great for the first uh, couple of months i've been renting it out um although would i purchase this for a daily driver as my personal car probably not just because of the impracticality of it and i live pretty close to the city so parking it um, in our small garage and our small parking space is definitely a mission every single day and uh, just a random thing is we also have a tesla as well so we have to like switch out uh the parking spots whenever we need to charge this or charge that car so uh that does get a little bit annoying aside from that though i think the car drives beautifully if you are uh definitely wanting to try this out i would definitely recommend renting one just because it's extremely fast it's a lot of fun since it is four-wheel drive um, and you have the battery in the front, the engine in the back, you know, the pickup is extremely fast and overall it just handles well. So um, my review of the car is it's, it's, it's really beautiful. It's great. It's just an amazing car to drive, an amazing experience, just not the most practical and best for a daily driver. I appreciate you guys watching this video and I'm definitely going to be making a whole almost like documentary series of just um, how my experience goes renting this car and also uh, my entire experience on Turo. So if you guys want to follow that, I would really recommend subscribing. Um, aside from that, have a great day and I'll see you guys in the next video.